questions to me regarding the view, bring it to council, and then we decide whether we're going to respond to it. I will, at the view, get to point out what I want them to see. Yes, but you shouldn't have to take very much time in doing that since you're going to do a preview statement here before we go up. Next issue, do we want a record on the view? State? No. Thank you. Anything else on the, on the view? We'll take the jury right down the stairs on this side, uh, and you can take uh, just meet us all out at the bottom of those stairs, and you can sort of help defense counsel find their way, and then the clients find their way to those that. To the back stairs. Yeah. Okay. The ones on there's two. If you're looking at the back of the courthouse, the ones on closest, the right. Closest closest to your office. I think you, you, can, you can bring defense counsel and, and their clients through the uh, grand jury entrance and walk well, through the grand jury entrance. What do you think? Um, that's fine. We can just walk. The, the, the sidewalks aren't very bad. So okay. that's what happens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 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 something that we should be doing now? We, we, can, we can do it right after openings if you want prior to the jury. I'd like to, the, the, jury's, the jury's in the ante room. I'd like okay. to. Yep. No, nope, not a problem. I'm just going to close that a little bit. That's okay. All set? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, if you would remain standing, everyone else may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, would you please raise your right hands. We solemnly swear or affirm that you will carefully consider the evidence of the law presented to you in these cases and that you will deliver a fair and true verdict as to the charges against the defendants of help you God. Thank you. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, will you please listen to charge 
number 560106C in docket 2012-S1138, in which it is complained that Elizabeth Edwards at Veterans Park, Manchester, New Hampshire, on the 19th day of October 2012 at 2325 hours, in said county and state did commit the offense of criminal trespass, contrary to RSA 635-22B2, and the laws of New Hampshire for which the defendant should be held to answer in that the defendant did knowingly enter or remain in Veterans Park in defiance of an order to leave or not to enter, which was personally communicated to her by Officer, Officer Jonathan Macara against the peace and dignity of the state. And please listen to charge 560705C in docket 2012-S1120, in which it is complained that Elizabeth Grunwald at Veterans Park, Manchester, New Hampshire, on the 19th day of October in 2011 at 2325 hours in said uh, county and state did commit the offense of criminal trespass contrary to RSA 635-22B2 and the laws of New Hampshire for which the defendant should be held to answer in that the defendant did knowingly enter or remain in Veterans Park in defiance of an order to leave or not to enter, which was personally communicated to her by Officer Alan Aldenberg against the peace and dignity of the state. And please listen to charge number 560047C in docket 2012-S1125, in which it is complained that Matthew Richards at Veterans Park, Manchester, New Hampshire, on the 19th day of October 2011, at 2325 hours, Instead, county and state did commit the offense of criminal trespass, contrary to RSA 635-22B2, and the laws of New Hampshire for which the defendant should be held to answer in that the defendant did knowingly enter or remain in Veterans Park in defiance of an order to leave or not to enter, which was personally communicated to him by Officer Robert McGowan against the peace and dignity of the state. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the defendants have been arraigned on these charges and have pled not guilty and have this, they put themselves upon their country for trial, which country you are. Assistant County Attorneys Charlene Dulac and Lexi Rojas have joined the issue for the state and you are to say by your verdicts whether the defendants are guilty or not guilty of the offenses whereof they stand charged. Hearken to the evidence. Attorney Keshe, why don't you just introduce each of your clients to the jury so that they can match the, the names to the your clients. I'd be happy to do that. Thank you. This is Elizabeth Edwards. This is Matt Richards. This is Beth Grunewald. Thank you. So, members of the jury, what we're going to do this morning is that uh, opening statements, uh, and I've asked counsel to incorporate into their opening statements a preview statement. In other words, they're going to uh, tell you what they would like you to see when we do the view. Uh, and then counsel may point things out when we're out on the view. The view is in this park, right behind, right behind the court. So we'll uh, go right after opening. We'll go and do the view. While we're out on the view, uh, take it all, take it all in because it's evidence. It's considered evidence for your consideration and deliberation. Uh, if you have a question, come to me, and then I'll talk to counsel to determine whether it is a question that we can respond to. Okay. But listen carefully because they're going to talk about what they want you to pay attention to in their opening statements, and then they may point a few things out when we're out in the park itself. Okay? We all set? Oh, by the way, there, the parties have stipulated to a number of matters. When we come back from the view, uh, I'll read those stipulations. Is that a good time, counsel? Okay. All yours. Sorry to interrupt.
Harry's Memorial Park as they gathered around the spotlight. <clears throat> and I'll be pointing out that spotlight to you during the field. Now this group was comprised of many different people. There were some people that identified themselves as members of Occupy New Hampshire. There were others that identified themselves as members of other groups. There were some casual observers. And there were some members of the media, whether it be form media or, or social media bloggers. You will learn that Occupy is a type of protest. The underlying goal of the protest is different for each individual protester. It usually surrounds a unifying theme of dissatisfaction with the government or dissatisfaction with the economy or sometimes both. That night, on October 19, 2011, people in the park were given three choices. They could choose to remain in the park until 11 p.m. and then leave and move their, site, their demonstration to the sidewalk. Choice number two was that they could choose to stay beyond 11 p.m. and then upon being asked to leave, choose to refuse to leave and then receive a citation then move their demonstration to the sidewalk. Or they could choose to stay into the park until after 11 p.m. They could choose to refuse to leave and receive a citation. And then they could choose to refuse to leave and then be arrested for criminal trespass. During this I will point out to you where the park is in relation to where the sidewalk is. All members of this group were welcome, will learn, they were welcome to return to the park when it reopened at 7 a.m. to continue the demonstration. You will hear how some people in the park chose to leave without penalty at 11 p.m. Others knowingly entered Veterans Memorial Park and remained there in defiance of a court order to leave, which was personally communicated to them by a person authorized to do so. And these defendants, knowing that they were not licensed or privileged to be there, chose to stay in defiance of that order. Now, the judge will tell you that these defendants admit that on October 19th, were in Veterans Park. They admit that at the time they were in the park, it was closed. They admit that it closes from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. And they each admit that they were each personally given orders to leave the park from Manchester police officers, Officer Morgan Lovejoy, Officer Alan Oldenburg, Officer Jonathan Mackerel, Officer Robert McGowan, After being given orders to leave, these defendants admit that they remained in the park in defiance of those orders to leave. And they admit that they knew that they were not licensed or privileged to be there. Now, if the defendants agree that they knowingly entered the park and remained there in defiance of an order to leave, and they admit that they were not licensed or privileged to be there, will argue that they are unique and special. The defendants 
people ask you to exercise your hedges of powers? Jury nullification. Jury nullification is reserved for situations where the state has proven their case beyond a reasonable doubt. Despite that, the jury chooses just heard of the state's opening that my clients violated a curfew ordinance, that they refused to leave a car, that they are guilty of trespass. That is a truth about this case. But it is not the truth about this case. The truth about this case is much deeper, it's much wider, and it's much richer than what the state would ha would has just talked about. What this case is about is the law, and that is which law takes predominance. A city ordinance that says you can't be in a park between 7 to 11 or the Constitution. And that's why we're here today, to talk about the Constitution and the rights that the Constitution gives to all of us, to my clients, to those people sitting in the gallery, to the prosecutors, and to you. My clients had every right to be in that park because the Constitution says they have a right to be in that park. They have a right to assemble peaceably, which they did. They have a right to dialogue on political issues, which they did, and they have a right to do this on a public park. That's where they were, a public park, which is set aside for these purposes. Now, the state wants you to concentrate on this little sliver of time, 11 p.m. on October 19th. But in order for you to render a fair verdict in this case, you need to look at the big picture here. <coughs> so what do I mean by that? Well, let me illustrate what I mean by that. Here's a little picture. It's a picture of, of uh, 
couple of kids surrounded by adults. Looks like they're wearing 18th century clothes. What is this picture about? In order for you to understand what this picture is about, you have to look at the big picture. And here is the big picture. This is a painting by John Trumbull, who was um, a, a fabulous painter and who um, drew pictures of what was going on in early American history. And this picture is a, a picture of one of the most momentous moments in American history. It is the moment when George Washington gave up his commission as a general in order to assume the presidency. And it stands for the proposition that in our country, civilian rule is paramount to military rule. It's an extremely important moment that was depicted here. But you wouldn't know it, what it was about, if you just looked at this little bit, just this little section of it. You have to look at the big picture. And the big picture here, in this case, is that these folks weren't a little isolated island of protesters. They were participating in, if you can remember back to September 2011 and, and October 2011, what was a large movement at that time in this history. It was a, it was a movement that started in Zuccotti Park in Washington, D.C. and spread all the way across this country to San Diego. And the Manchester was a little, little piece of it. And it was, as the state said, the Occupy movement. And you're going to hear a little bit about it and a little bit about the goals that they wanted to accomplish. But the one thing we can say about that movement is that these people getting together to have political dialogue and to try and move their country in a particular direction, that is quintessential American speech that is quintessentially protected by the Constitution. I'm not here asking you to agree with their message or endorse their views. That's not what this case is about. But I am asking you, asking you, to say they had a right to be there. And that right is important. It's as simple as this. Even people that live in Manchester, New Hampshire, have a right to assemble peaceably in a public park to express their views and petition their government. That's why one of the reasons that we set aside public parks just for that type of conversation. Folks, the Constitution stands for nothing if it doesn't stand for that. So for the state, this case is about a will curfew ordinance. For the defendants, this case is about core values of who we are as Americans. And that's why this is an important case. And we appreciate your taking the time out of your lives to sit on this case. Uh, you know, as citizens, we have a lot of rights, some of which we just talked about. We have very few responsibilities. One of those responsibilities is to answer the calls to jury duty. But you witnessed, as I did, that a lot of people don't do it. They don't answer that call. You did, and I want to thank you for that. This case is about the promise of the Constitution. And that promise can't be met without people like you to stand up for it. And that's what we're going to be asking you to do in this trial.
All right, so what we're, Mr. Chair, what we're going to do is we're going to go on the view. Uh, bailiff will put you down the, the stair column right behind here, so get your coaches. We'll all meet down on the, the back side of this building by the stairwell. Uh, Council, what, what, what do you need us to walk, walk to the front of the park and stop there? Right, you mean, uh, yeah. To Elm yeah, walk from here to Elm Street. Isn't that where you want to focus? Yeah, we can probably just do a loop around the park. So we're going to do a half moon around the park. We'll stop on the Elm Street side. Council may address you and point certain things out. Uh, like I said, everything you see is evidence. If something they say or something you see uh, raises a question, don't speak it out loud to your fellow jurors. Come see me. I'll convey that question to you. Council, and then we'll, we'll try to respond if we can. Then we'll come back in. Uh, well, let's see what time it is when we come back in. Consider this your morning break. <laughs> so we'll see you all out back. Okay. All right.